Global share markets saw a big slide overnight. US markets were down by over 2%. And once again, it is mainly about the US economy and future growth prospects. On Tuesday, the US Federal Reserve did announce further stimulus, but many fear that this will not be enough. In effect, the US Fed are not putting more money into the economy. They are simply recycling previous stimulus as it does roll off. Many had hoped for more in order to crank up the world's largest economy. With the fears about the market, there has been a drive back to the US dollar. On Thursday morning, the Kiwi dollar has fallen against the US and is trading at 71.70. The recent bout of risk aversion has seen a big drive for investors to go back to government bonds, and as such, yields have dropped. The two-year US Treasury bond has dropped to a record low overnight of under 0.49%. The 10-year German bond has dropped to 2.42%, which is the lowest level since 1989. Yields at these very low levels give a pretty good indication that investors are not expecting to see good growth in coming years. The UK have also dropped their economic growth forecasts over the next few years. They have dropped next year's forecast from 3.6% down to 3%. As such, there has been a drop in the UK pound against most major currencies. The Kiwi dollar has made some small gains overnight, but is still trading just shy of 46p. All the action in global wheat markets seems to have dissipated somewhat recently. Yesterday, the US Department of Agriculture did announce that they expect that they and other major producers will more than adequately fill any gap in trade left by the Russian export ban. After rising steeply, US wheat prices have actually fallen by about 10% over the last seven days. Analysts are expecting that higher feed input costs will impact on US meat processor margins in the year ahead, especially for chicken. Tyson's Foods, which is one of the largest meat processors in the US, is likely to find the next few months fairly tough. Chicken prices have been fairly low through 2010 based on high supply and low feed input costs. However, as feed input costs do rise, chicken prices are also likely to rise and this will close the gap between chicken and beef. This should be positive for the beef markets down the track.